Hi, I'm Shane. I'm Kelsey. And, and this, this is, is Dixie. Dixie. And we're Love Hub for Life. And for 199 weeks, we have been traveling around getting lost all over the country in this big yellow house. That's right, guys. We live in our self-built camper and uh, we travel around helping other people build their homes on wheels too. Right now, we are in Virginia helping a lady named Wendy convert her old Airstream into something beautiful. We cannot wait to show you the progress. Be sure and hit those thumbs up buttons and comment below so that we know to be grateful for you. Good morning, y'all, and welcome to another week on a hillside in Virginia. And check out this big shiny thing I've been working on. I took a little bit of a break from it over the past week or so, and I've been remodeling a bathroom inside the house that it's parked next to. But this week, we're gonna be making some movement forward. It's kind of torn apart in here, if y'all haven't seen the previous week's episodes where I disassembled this thing. It had some water damage, and we have been working on removing it, as well as a lot of the normal systems. We're turning this Airstream into basically a pool house. So it's gonna be living on blocks. The wheels will still function. It'll be able to be moved to a new home, but there is not a lot of concern for it being roadworthy again. We're focusing more on making this thing look pretty. And that's what we do doing this week. I'm gonna be sealing up these big holes I've made and building a bathroom in here too. Man, I've turned into a bathroom builder. Y'all hang on, this week's gonna be sawdust covered. So one of the things we're doing with this camper is we're kind of retrofitting it so that you can just plug it in through a normal 20 amp connection or 15 amp connection, a regular residential plug. One of the things I'm doing is I'm using a power converter to convert AC down to 12 volt DC and that is how we're going to be energizing all of the 12 volt items in the camper so there's no need for a battery anymore. Also what I'm doing is I've taken all the connections off of the back of the seven pin which is where you plug it into your truck when you're pulling it and I'm wiring all of the outside lights to come on when you flip the port switch up there and it'll all be energized off of the shore connection versus being energized off of the truck. All the stuff you need is right here. You just have to reconfigure the electrical so that the power is coming from one source versus this source here. But once I get this put back on, a couch will be over this, so I don't really want to access this again. What are you doing there, Shane? I'm, I'm doing metal work. So, this is the interior of some of the cabinets that are not going back in the Airstream. And this is how Airstream builds things so lightly because their trailers weigh a lot as it is. Um, so they put wood texture on one side, it's just a piece of metal. I'm using this particular one to fill in a hole in the back of the, where the radio is. But I also, come with me. built this today too so originally this was plastic and you could get light through it and i guess it was to create you know a natural lighting there in the living room but all that broke of course and caused a huge leak so i used some of that metal to patch this as well we're trying to spend as little as possible on this thing you know that's a lot of metal work for a carpenter i know right it almost <laughs> looks good too So to continue along with all of my chaos, I've also been inspecting the plumbing because I am tying all of the drain lines together in the back, back there in that hole, so that the water can be ran out with a hose pot because it's just gray water for the sinks. And then you're going to be displacing that water on site. So in order to do that, I had to test the drain, which there's a double sink under here and it's got these handy dandy cutting boards that go on top. But, 
this P-trap is leaking and they built all of this plumbing with ABS, which is totally fine. It's just kind of hard to get a hold of at a big box store. And that is where we're doing most of our shopping for this project. If you go to a plumbing supplier, then you can find it. So what I'm gonna do is I have to rebuild all of this ABS with PVC to make this leak stop happening because generally in residential plumbing, you have adjustable ones. There's a screw, this looks like one of the screws, but it's not. All this is glued together because this thing's supposed to vibrate a lot and those fittings will come loose if they're just the hand tightened ones. So I'm gonna replace it with glue and PVC. Guess I gotta add that to my handy dandy list. Now where did it go? everyone so I started my day out up in this little airstream that's hiding up in the trees and I could hear my name being called over and over again so with a little assistance I, I helped remove this box because there's a monster trapped inside let's see if it attacks me oh it's a squirrel <laughs> oh he's a flying squirrel <laughs> Well, I'm excited. The weather is clear for several days and we're supposed to be finally getting the exterior completely sealed up by this evening. So that means I can start working in here, moving us towards actually putting a floor back in this thing and it's starting to resemble a camper again. But before I do that, I have some things I need to repair in the belly of the beast. This here is the outer skin of the camper. So just outside of this thin piece of metal is outdoors and you can see some of it coming through the cracks there now this is the tail end of the camper so at some point this thing got slammed onto something and all this was dented so I'm utilizing um, modified truss screws to help me pull the metal back into place and then I'm going to get all this cleaned up and then I'll be adding spray foam along all of these seams and then I'll seal it from outside with a sealant but that gives me a backing because if I were to just try to seal this crack right here, that would be absolutely useless, seeing it's such a large crack. And those persist in several places around this thing, so I've got to crawl around underneath this morning. It's okay. It's all going to be worth it, I promise. All right, it's time to work on the power box. So all of these components were underneath the stove, which is right here on the inside of the camper. This is where the battery used to live. I've taken the battery out and this line comes from the shore connection, which is just going to be your average little 20 amp plug instead of a big 30, or a 30 amp plug that this was originally wired for. That's going to be powering this device which is a converter. So it'll step down our AC to DC 12 volt. And that will power this, which is just a DC fuse block. And all of these are the main runs for the camper and they'll be plugged into that. In turn, making it super accessible to the owners. Hey guys, how's it going? Hi Kelsey. Hello. What's happening over here? Hi Sammy Sam. Sparky. All that's going to replace those huge systems I normally build. Well, I've been playing around this trailer all day today. Miss Wendy hasn't stopped on top of this thing. Are you done yet? Almost this much. <laughs> Almost done. That's my favorite saying. I'm almost done. So, one of the projects I completed today was I repaired this door and I got our little electrical system installed. So, this is just the normal little block with our power box here. 
haven't ran current through it yet, but I do have it wired. And I got the floor ready to put the insulation in all the way around. And after the insulation gets put in, we can put down all this wood, but we're really hoping to get the outside sealed and then test it with a hose pipe before we move forward. We got back here done as well. I know it looks a mess in here. We're about ready to put this flooring down. We'll be back at it tomorrow. We're starting this morning off inside. You look rather comfy over there, Shane. I am. I like this big teddy bear. <laughs> we are taking a break on the Airstream. I'm waiting on some supplies to come in and we're going to take a little bit of a road trip. We're going to head over to the hostel because there's apparently a propane leak coming off of this camper and I'm going to do my best to find it for Doc so she don't go boom. Yeah, yeah, we can't be having our friends blowing up. And that means that our friend John is coming to get us to take us to one of Dixie's favorite places in the world. Hey, baby. Are you excited to go see Turk? Turk and Dizzy? Oh, my goodness. If you guys follow us very closely at all, then you will recognize this place. Our parking spot over there is looking so empty without us. <laughs> it will be filling it up again soon, but John chauffeured us in the van with the help of some furry friends. Now that is the chiropractic office on wheels that Shane built. The salt cave is back behind that RV, but today we are here about the RV and a propane leak. No blowing up, Doc. We love you. So the reason I was asked to come is because Doc was smelling propane as she was outside of the camper and inside. So I came to check the usual suspects. We have a heater, we have a propane refrigerator in here, and then we also have a water heater. And I opened it. And that right there is the control wires to this, which is what controls the gas coming into the water heater. And that's where our propane's coming from, so I gotta look up the parts. That should be easy to repair. Where are we going, Shane? <laughs> We're going to Camping World, you know, where parts are overpriced and available sometimes. But today they are available, but they're still overpriced. The, the the valve to the actual water heater caught on fire at some point and we need to acquire the parts so we can replace it because Doc's got adventures to take that RV on. Oh no, she actually was in danger of blowing up? She, no, not really. The way they install water Turn heaters, right onto curve road. They, they vent outside. So all that propane was just coming out of the side of the RV and spewing out all over the grass. So as long as you're not smoking a cigarette back there, you're good to go, so she was safe. Hmm. Well, I'm certainly glad that we are getting it fixed and glad that Doc's got this fancy new truck for us to drive around in. It'll be much easier to get to Roanoke in this than in the Love Hut. inside this little old airstream and this morning I'm gonna be removing some plumbing underneath the sink all this has got to come out fortunately I'm not having to prepare for this rig to be mobile again so I'm gonna take this out and then we're just gonna be able to put in a normal residential type of downspout we're not gonna have to worry about hard plumbing like they've done here and gluing everything together so let's get this out and see what I've got to go buy to get this all patched up. I'm about 
to head back out there to my little camper, but I had to run in here real quick to install a curtain rod. And I'm gonna show it to you guys. So this one is for a 90 degree corner, which is really cool. And this particular one offers two ways to install it. One, you can glue it up to the tile, which is the route we are taking. It comes with its own glue and I'm not really sure how that product tests out because I haven't ever used this before, but we're going that route. If this fails in the future, then drilling out the towel and putting in anchors would be the next step I would take. But as of now, we just weren't ready to put holes in this brand new shower. So now this has got to sit for a couple days and I'm going to head back out to my little camper. that I got that tile shower glued up in there. I've moved back out to the camper. I'm all over the place today. I'm gonna have to wait on some of the parts for up front. They were not accessible locally. We're in a pretty remote area as far as civilization is concerned. It's quite a drive to any major stores and we're at the mercy of whatever is there or we have to order and wait a week. So we try to order things, but you know, that's not always the case. Currently what I'm dealing with is the fact this old ABS drain system is really shot. So I'm, I'm trying to piece in PVC and connect into it so I don't have to replace the whole system because a lot of it runs actually underneath the floor. My current situation is this, which is going to be the drain pipe from the bathroom sink. And I've been trying to preserve that, but... It's, I'm really getting close to just cutting it all out because the effort is on the underside of this fitting here, this is a T and it tees down and then a hose pipe can be connected to it so the gray water can be drained off and put into a container or disposed of properly. But I'm trying to retrofit all this together. Ain't puzzles just fun? see I'm out here scoping out things in this little camper. Wendy's gonna be cleaning up the walls in here today. She has been working diligently over the past several weeks to get all the caulk that was applied many years ago all over the outside of this thing scraped off which is a very meticulous effort and then last night she got it all sealed back up with caulking and we have a couple more pieces we have to get and we have to get a another piece of plywood we bought some plywood from a local store. I want to show you guys this is possible. When I picked up the sheet, the end of it was a little frayed and I didn't think much about it. Because usually if that happens, you can just, you know, cut it off and it's no big deal. But this whole top ply of this plywood has failed all the way throughout the sheet. So every, every piece of it is all doing this. So I've got to get it taken back, which is one of my big floor patches here. So in the name of saving us time going to the parts store, I'm actually going to start working in the house again. There is a second bathroom in that house and I did such a good job building the first one that they want me to go ahead and tear out the other one and build another tile shower in there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and demo that because trash man comes tomorrow and we got to get it ready for him to pick up. Let's get going. I'm going to show you guys this bathroom before I tear it wide open today. At some point, unfortunately, someone slipped and fell and they landed on the, the nozzle here. And you can see it's just loose. And there's some damage there, which I assume is associated in some way or another. But what we're going to be doing is I'm going to gut from this corner all the way around to here. And we're going to be tiling this whole area and doing the same transitionless shower basin that we did in the other one. Just different towel, different design, same toilet. But this thing is gonna be a challenge. 
This is an old metal tub and I'm not sure if it is steel or what it, if it's steel, you can't really break it up with a hammer. If it's another type, I believe cast iron is what they call the other one. You can crack it open with a hammer, but I'm gonna try to get it cracked. I'm gonna see what I can accomplish. If not, I'm gonna have to cut it up with my grinder and my saw. Let's see what this is gonna take. Well, I got the bottom row of tile out and I've learned a lot already. It looks like this tile shroud was installed directly on top of the sheetrock. And there's the paper coating. It looks like they just smeared glue, which for those of you that don't know, sheetrock and water are not friends. So this water has been wicking up into the sheetrock. Coincidentally, it's gonna make it very easy to get all this tore out. But that's not how you do this. Let's try again. I went outside to the camper to look for Shane and didn't find him, but um, it appears that something's going on in here. Whoa. I didn't like how this one looked either. Double whoa. I know, right? You've done a lot today. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired already. Is it quitting time yet, boss? I mean, you can quit whenever you're ready, babe. Mm. <laughs> I don't think so. Move your feet, let's go. Come on, get out of my way, Tex. Color me impressed though. That's a lot. Yeah, it was a whole bathroom this morning. I even used it to make sure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> so after getting through several layers of flooring and MDF particle board and then Luan overlayment, I finally got down to the true subfloor of the bathroom and I found this. There's duct tape around the seams of this patch. It looks like they had a toilet leak at some point and patched it up. I gotta pull that up to make sure everything is kosher underneath it. My money's on no. How about y'all's? Based off the size of that hole over there, I'm gonna say these people probably did not brace these seams. Well, that looks better than I thought it was going to, but still pretty freaking bad. I'm gonna have to spend some time getting all this supported and the rest of this cut out so I can make a real patch job across the bottom because this just ain't gonna work for me. I thought I was gonna get lucky with this bathroom. I should have known better. Meanwhile, out here, Wendy is doing a little bit of cleaning. And she's got a pipe out there while she does it. Oh, Kelsey, don't come and bleed on my magic. <laughs> I don't want you getting sick. Things making some progress, y'all. I think Shane will be out back out here tomorrow. <laughs> Well, guys, it would appear that Shane's done building for the day. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. The banjo called to me. I got as far as I could in there tearing it apart, and tomorrow we'll build something, I guess. But until then, I'm going to play this banjo. I think Dixie approves. Just don't try to take your seat. Back on the camper this morning. We had a bit of a rain test last night. And unfortunately, we weren't quite finished sealing it up. So we did bring in a little water, but a minuscule amount into comparison that it has been for months and years. 
But today I've got this awning dropped down and we are working on the seam along through here. I've also installed my retrofitted water heater panel. So now we've got this all sealed up and I'm waiting on the ceiling around it to dry. And today basically I'm just going all around this rig and making sure I've got every little crack sealed because we got a little more rain coming this weekend and we are tired of seeing water getting inside of this thing. Let's see if I can get this all patched up. Well, I'm gonna end this week like I've ended many before. I'm out of screws and glues and more have to be gotten. More particularly, I'm out of sealant and screws. I did manage to get the, tr the trim put around the camper along the bottom. I'm gonna be leaving these pop rivets in tonight because it's supposed to rain and I don't have anything to seal them up with so I don't wanna pop them off. So make sure you come back next week and see the progress of this and possibly the progress of the bathroom in the house too. We'll see y'all then. Guys, we want to take the time to say thank you to each and every one of you who have been following us along this far. And if you haven't already done so, be sure and hit that subscribe button and comment below so that we know to be grateful for you. If you want to check out a different point of view of our life other than YouTube, check out some of our other social media like Facebook and Instagram or Etsy to check out some of Kelsey's wire wrap jewelry as well as some sweet Love Hub merch. And if you're looking for a way to get in contact with us because you want this guy to do some awesome work for you, then you can contact us through any of those social media sites or through lovehutforlife at gmail.com. Guys, we'll see you next week with a whole lot of updates on this Airstream and our adventures. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.